air raid alarm in Lviv as we listen to some wartime classical music and Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine joining us now. Uh, what are we hearing here, Joe? Hey, Bob. Good afternoon from Lviv. Uh, this is a composition by my friend Jakub Jakub Svintiski. Uh, he's a, a really a world-renowned jazz trumpeter from the city of Dnipro, and he made this piece of music in honor of his cousin Mikola, uh, who was killed fighting for Ukraine in May. And uh, I think I alluded to this yesterday. Uh, my friend Yakiv was unable to play music like so many other musicians in the first weeks and the months of the war. A lot of people couldn't even listen to music. But it was when his cousin died that he realized that he, you know, he, the best gift that he could give to Ukraine was continuing to make music. And I, I think uh, this piece shows, and I, I have it linked also at ukrainianfreedomnews.com. You can see, if you watch all the musicians performing this piece, I, it shows the best phrase I can think of is the elegance of Ukrainian defiance. And it's, uh, you know, the, 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 this really is a time of a, of a reawakened creativity, partly because people don't know how much time they have left. Uh, and, and partly because I think, as I alluded to before, war intensifies. It intensifies the emotions. It, 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 it makes you examine things that you otherwise might leave unexamined. And so I think this piece sort of captures that very well. And it also shows that, uh, you know, even when you hear that air alarm, you, it, it immediately there's a kind of happy piano music, and there's still a desire to somehow find the sunny side of life, uh, even amid the terror and the fear. And, and your friend, uh, the jazz trumpeter, uh, studied music here in the Midwest, didn't he? He did. He studied at Western Michigan in uh, Kalamazoo. Uh, his wife is a soprano with the Lviv National Opera, which, by the way, is back. It's functioning again. Uh, so all these things are continuing. And that piece of music uh, debuted last week uh, virtually at the Festival of New Trumpet Music in, in New York City. So it's great to see that these Ukrainians are still able to, even if they can't leave Ukraine, are still able to to to, to connect with the world. Yes, uh, a, a great culture, as you've described to us. We're hearing this morning about Russian missile strikes uh, breaking a major dam in Ukraine. What can you tell us about this, Joseph? Yeah, this is in a, a very interesting city called, uh, it's also difficult to pronounce, uh, Kriviri. Uh, it's an 80 mile long city because it was built along. Uh, 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 it's an industrial city built along a series of mines. So 80 mile long city. It's the hometown of the president and first lady of Ukraine. And so there's a thought that maybe this is, you know, Russia, the Russians have been pounding this city pretty continually for months. Uh, and they hit a, they hit a hydroelectric hydroelectric dam, uh, which has caused uh, many houses are flooded. Uh, the Ukrainians t in the past hours have been able to lower the water levels, but this is in keeping with what we've seen. You know, everyone's wondering what will Russia's response be to Ukraine taking back all that territory in Kharkiv. And so far, it seems a major response besides the continued shelling of, of cities along the front. Uh, the major response has been to attack infrastructure. And so, you know, Kharkiv was without power and water and internet for two days. Uh, we've had some other infrastructure attacks and then this attack on on the power source in Zelensky's hometown. And, you know, as, you know, it's still, it's, it's fall. It's, it, it's not, it's like probably 70 some degrees today, but Ukrainians are beginning to say, we got to prepare for a winter where we might not have access to electricity. Uh, in fact, in Lviv, they're, 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 they're trying to make sure as many people as possible have wood burning stoves. Mm -hmm. And so there is a thought that this might be sort of Russia's uh, sort of terror tactics uh, to, to, uh, sort of make people frightened about what, what kind of winter we might have ahead of us. Yeah, a reminder that despite the good news lately, uh, there are tough times ahead. Our listeners send you uh, lots of questions, and we get comments on our conversations, Joseph. Let me get to a couple of those. Uh, Bob, please ask Joseph if the Ukraine is instituting a draft. My daughter used to live there and said she just heard this. Can you verify yeah, since uh, the first hours of the war, uh, Ukraine has been under martial law. And, and so uh, there, there is a type of draft, and, and most males, I think, between age 20, I think 20 to 60, cannot easily leave the country. But now as things have settled down and the military is well organized, uh, and as well as the, uh, the territorial uh, militias for each region, uh, there, there are Ukrainians, uh, Ukrainian men who are able to leave if they have business opportunities, if they're musicians, say, uh, or if they're working in IT in the States. Uh, so that has uh, it's more orderly and calm. But, yes, you, you could get called up to the draft. Uh, and in fact, there are some Ukrainians that have, you know, uh, not everyone is meant to fight in the same way. And so some people are, you know, trying you know, are very terrified of this. Um, 
uh, so yes, there is a draft, uh, but they, it's not. Uh, there's still a lot of people who have not been called up. Of course. Here's a text from one of our listeners. Joseph Lindsley from Ukraine is a great reporter, but also a wonderful, thoughtful man. He is the best interview on your show each day. Thank you. Well, I, I can second that, I think. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, uh, can, can I, I, I want to point out to you, uh, speaking of reporting, just uh, there's a few strange things that happened yesterday. Mm-hmm. Unconnected, perhaps, but uh, just interesting to note. Uh, President Zelensky's motorcade was in a car accident in Kiev last night. Strange, oh, I think. Really? And then also, there was reports from from Russia, which again, you know, I, I, we can never fully trust what we hear, but that Putin's uh, limousine was attacked yesterday. Like so the left wheel or so front wheel was attacked, and the Russians are saying it was assassination attempt. Uh, some people think that maybe this is just to get sympathy for Putin, but that news also came out yesterday. And then just to make it a little more strange. Uh, yesterday in the uh, capital of Kazakhstan, the former Soviet Republic, about 2,500 miles from, from Kiev, uh, in, in Ur Sultan, the capital, uh, you had Pope Francis and you had Xi Jinping, president of China, so somewhat of an ally of, uh, uh, of Putin, and there's rumors that maybe they met. And then today in the neighboring country, uh, neighboring Kazakhstan of Uzbekistan, is Xi Jinping the Prime Minister of India, and Vladimir Putin, while the Pope is, uh, I think, still in Kazakhstan. So sort of strange maneuverings and meetings happening, and I don't know what to make of it yet. Yeah, and strange alliances, for sure. Joseph Lindsley in Ukraine. Thank you, Joseph. We look forward to our conversation tomorrow.